What's going to happen with you in the future, Gail? Don't know. Would you like to get married one no. day? No. Why not? Don't fancy it. And you can't see anything to do other than take drugs? No. Well, what's the point of it all? There's no point, really. Well, why do you do it? Because I knew myself sometimes. Well, how will you live when you get out? Less resistance. Or you can con it, ask people for shilling. <laughs> Soon works up to a lot. But beg for it? Yeah. You don't mind doing this? No. What kind of a state do you think you're in, girl? I don't think I'm in a state. Are you happy the way you are? Happy as I'll ever be. What does that mean exactly? Just happy as I'll ever be. What it says. Have you been happy in the past? I must have been when I was younger. What do you mean when you were younger? Well, I must have been happy sometime. Can't be miserable all you like. Where do you think you're heading, Gail? To die, I suppose. To die? Yeah. But you're only 19. You have an IQ, of, they say, of 120. Mm, that's, what they say. that's what they say. And you're pretty? You're awful. And do you think you're going to die? Yeah, I don't mind that. You don't mind dying? No. Why do you say that? I don't know. I don't really want to live. Gail was almost beyond help now. If she really didn't want to live, what could anyone do for her? I feel very badly about her today. I feel much more depressed than I did last Saturday. Why? Well, when I came last Saturday, she just... She'd just recovered from the, the worst part of her illness and she was cheerful and in bed and she knew she was too ill to do anything, but uh, I fear she will leave before she's better now. Leave her of her own accord? Yes, I don't think she'll stay there until she's better. Why do you say this? She's determined to destroy herself. She's determined. She's completely self-destructive. She, she doesn't have any will to get better. What makes you say this, that she wants to destroy herself? She does. She basically, she doesn't want to live in the world. She doesn't like the world. She doesn't want to live in it. What about her family? Her mother doesn't, she has no father, and her mother doesn't even know she's in here. And if she did know, I'm afraid it, it wouldn't work. She wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to. They couldn't survive a visit. They couldn't survive a 20 minute visit. What do you mean? They would, uh, they would have a row. Well, has she brothers or sisters? No, she's an only child. So she has nobody? She has no one at all. She has no one. She's quite alone. Except you? Except me, but she doesn't really want me. She doesn't really want me. I, I, she's pleased to see me when I go. And I only hope that in her heart, she really does know I do care. She must know that, no matter what she says. She must know I care. On the South Devon coast, just outside the remote village of Tor Cross, there's a farm where the land runs down to the sea. The farm is owned by the Rue family. They saw Gail's interview on Man Alive and decided they wanted to help. They had children of their own, but Herbert and his wife Florence felt that they wanted to show Gail a different kind of life, and twice they had her down to the farm for a short holiday. To begin with, it was a case of just we wanted to let her see that there was a better side to life, you know, and that life could be lived to the full, and it wasn't just something desperate to be got over as quickly as possible. How did you feel about her, uh, um, considering the fact that you have young children in the house yourself? Well, it didn't occur to us to begin with that there was going to be any, any danger, but uh, after having spoken to 
some relatives, you know, about having her, and they said, oh, you know, I wouldn't have some children in the house and things. But I asked the people who we li liaised with in London, you know, about the, the, the risk to this. Of course, our children had to come first. And uh, they said, oh, no, she, they, they thought she would probably smother the children with love rather than be um, at all vicious or anything, mm -hmm. you know. She was very happy with the children, yeah. Okay. They often talk about her still. Reginald used to go for walks with her. Yes, and out in the field mm -hmm. in front of the house, they walked around hand in hand together and would talk, and just like two friends. They always wanted to go into a bedroom first thing in the morning to wake her up, you know, to, to have fun and games. And they crawled all over and pulled her hair and never gave any peace, really, did they? No, no, really. Mm. When she was here and she saw you with your children, did she ever make any comment about this? Well, <clears throat> it was the first, I think it was probably the second day she was here, I was scolding them for something. You know, I, I wasn't um, cuddling them or anything, but that I was scolding them about being naughty, I think. And she looked at me there and she said, you know, it, it upsets me to see you with the children because uh, if I'd had a mother who cared for me as you care for your children, I wonder how I would have turned out. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't have ended up like this. It struck me then because I, it, it wasn't as though I was holding them in my arms or anything, or, but that I was scolding them, you know, and the fact that uh, it seemed to be this side of caring that she'd missed as well. But holidays don't last forever, and soon Gail was back in another institution, Tutingbeck Psychiatric Hospital. She'd gone straight to Piccadilly, stolen money from a news vendor's stall, and was sent to a drug dependence clinic here. Most patients were old mental defectives, and in her unit she was surrounded by other addicts. But her thoughts often returned to the farm in Devon. Dear Florence and all, I've been in another hospital since Monday night because I overdosed on barbiturates and they just brought me back today. I didn't really mean to do it, and I don't know why I did. I think I'm never going to come off drugs while I'm in this hospital because I'm just with other junkies all day and all we've got in common is drugs. I want to get off. At least I think I do, but at times I get so fed up, I think I just want to die. And to me, drugs seem the best way to do it. I wish I had somewhere to go when I do get off, because then at least I'd feel I had something to come off for. I wish Christmas would hurry up and come, because I was so happy when I was down there with you all. I really was. I mean that. I can't remember when I was so happy. She wasn't to see the countryside again nor play on the beach where she'd known something of the happiness of being a child. Had Gail ever indicated to Farmer Rue and his wife that if she'd been able to stay with them, it might have made just the difference? Well, obviously, we, we wonder just how it would have turned out, you know, and, um, we, you know, naturally we think, well, should we or shouldn't we? But when we think of the children, I think we couldn't have really done anything else, you know, from our own children's point of view. I mean, if we... If they'd been older, perhaps been away at school, or, or um, you know, it may have been different, but um, the fact that there's so little, really. The hardcore heroin addicts, almost beyond help, were now her only friends. She met them underground near the all-night chemists where most of them took their prescriptions for drugs. Gail was now 18. She wasn't to know, but her last summer had ended. And by the time autumn and the dark nights came, her dependence on drugs was complete. <laughs> 